What's up? I already began to do some rust work on this car. Not filmed, but progress has been made. I started welding the rust that I found in the rear um, frame of this car. And then um, yeah, there is a lot of rust in the body as well. And I think I will make some videos about that. And today I'm going to take a little look at the engine. The engine sounds pretty healthy. Uh, in the previous video, I started it with the starting handle and it started easy. So I think this engine is pretty good, but I don't know for sure. I'm going to change the oil today to check the oil, how that looks. Then I'm going to look at the spark plugs. I know some like to read spark plugs, some don't. Sometimes they give a clue about the, uh, about the engine health. Other times they don't, but I'm going to take a look at them and then do a compression test because a compression test will at least tell me if all the cylinders are even. I expect this engine to be a very low compression. Remember, this is a 2.5 or 2.4 or something like that, and it is only producing around 70 horsepower, so it is really not struggling to make power. And I expect one of the reasons for that is very low compression. I know this one. I know this engine can run on octane 82, or maybe even lower. It is really not really that picky about the octane number, but I would like to see an even compression at least. I just noticed yesterday that this car got an air filter and the air filter is extremely dirty, but the hose for the air filter is not attached to the filter box. So I don't know for how long, but this engine has most likely just been sucking in dust and stuff, so uh, I'm a bit concerned, but the engine is sounding healthy, so I really hope it's okay. First, let's change the oil and see the color of that. That can sometimes tell you something about the engine health. If there is a lot of bearing material, for instance, then we know that the engine is not in a good health. So let's climb underneath the U.S and hope that we got the right tools. So we're gonna change the oil, or drain the oil at least to begin with. This is the drain plug. This, I do not know what is, it seems to be some kind of cover for the bell housing. That's also got a drain plug. I don't know if it's to drain water or something like that in case of a uh, water crossing or something like that. I'm not sure. But uh, today I'm only going to remove this to check the engine oil and change that. Hopefully I got the right oil filter, but we'll see. And I'm really interested to see the color of the of the oil. Not really the color, but more, like, more the uh, amount of bearing material that I hope to not see an oil sludge as well, but let's try. So no gasket seems to be used, but some kind of packing wool, much like you use on, on plumbing, it seems. Maybe I can take it the rest of the way with the hands. Well, it's looking pretty well actually so far. Not too disgusting. Oh, I wonder if my can is big enough. Whoa! Quickly. It seems to be <laughs> that it's getting pretty close to the edge now. I have no idea how much oil this engine takes, so that could have been an idea to check. This engine is huge compared to what I usually work on, and the oil pan is, is quite big as well. So I'm going to remove all this wool kind of stuff from the drain bolt that has been used to seal it with, because I think that a gasket ring of copper
will suffice. I just don't think they had that in uh, in stock when they did this. This is not something I normally see on an engine. I see it a lot on old plumbing that you use this string stuff to seal. But I think that an covering like this will do just fine. I hope. Either way, if not, it's not a big deal because this oil will not be in the engine for long because I would like to flush this engine a little bit by doing some regular oil changes to begin with. I'm going to install this and I think it is about time to change this oil filter. Hmm. I would like to actually find out when the oil was changed last and oil filter was changed last. I don't know if it's written anywhere. This is dirty, but being an off-road vehicle, it doesn't mean that it's a long time ago because it could just have been one trip into the uh, into off-road muddy place. Maybe it's clean underneath. Well, I'm going to remove it and then we're going to investigate if we can see any numbers or anything. Oh, here we have the oil filter. Very, very black. Let me try to clean it. I just want to see if I just get some kind of clue. At least it's not that dirty or rusty on the outside. It's very dirty, but not rusty. No clues, but uh, we're gonna change it anyway. Well, and this it should supposed to fit. It was very difficult to find a local oil filler that should fit, but it seems to be working. All right, it's a bit bigger, but I hope it will work. I'm gonna loop the seal and spin it back on the car. The old oil looks pretty all right, in my opinion. There is something here. That's the stuff that came out of the oil field. So it's a bit actually milky. It doesn't look like a buried material. I don't see any glitter. So I think we'll be all right. Next up, we're gonna dig out the engine. Just gonna see if I can remove this all together. Can that will make it easier to access. <clears throat> Here we go. Do you think I can hit? It's always difficult to get it to start without spilling. Oh, I spilled a little bit. Not too bad. Oh, it's a wonderful color. Now I have filled the entire tub end of the engine. It is draining very slowly. I'm gonna let it drain down and then check the oil again. I'm gonna remove the spark plugs because I would like to do a compression test on this engine. Looks fairly decent. Bit whitish on the tip, but other than that, it's not looking bad at all. Exactly the same, which is nice to see because one thing I don't really, I'm not really 
into reading spark plugs that much, but I really like to see them being even at least. And not, of course, extremely burnt or something like that. Or oily. That is actually really nice. It's not oily. This one is the same. Because if it was really oily, then I could have be having an issue with the uh, with the piston rings or the oil seal for the valves. And uh, actually, it's looking it's looking pretty well. And the last one, exactly the same. Don't know how well it picks up, but they look the same. It's a bit weird with the whitish tip, but. Uh, I think this is really fine. So let's get to work with the compression test. When doing a compression test, you need to give the car full throttle so the engine is able to breathe as much as possible. If you don't do that, you will get a much lower reading than, than what you are expecting. So pedal put so pedal to the metal. And then let it crank. So let's try cylinder number one. I'd say that is 130. Two. So this is it. This is, in my opinion, a really great result. I know the compression is quite low, but I think that is normal. I don't know what kind of compression this engine normally runs, but this is fine. This tells me that um, the piston and boss is pretty all right, and the valves must be adjusted pretty well. So I think I'm having luck at this point, and, and this engine is actually pretty healthy. So with the spark plugs back in and the wires and so on, next step is actually to start it up and see if it uh, still makes oil pressure. It did before. I don't know how high it is supposed to be, but it was around two, maybe three bars at idle when the engine was cold. So let's see what it does now. <clears throat> Same oil pressure as before, that's nice. I think it's good. So that wraps up another episode. Uh, this was just a small video changing the oil and checking the general health of the engine. There could be a lot of stuff wrong with it still, but this gives an indication that this engine is pretty healthy. Was I surprised? There is still a long way on this project, but um, this tells me that I don't think I will have to do much work to the engine. I will just have to clean it and service it. And um, I know that the coolant system needs a great flush because it looks like Mississippi River down there in the coolant reservoir. No sign of oil, but signs of rust. So that needs to be done. Also, almost all the hoses and fuel lines and air lines and all that is very perished. So I will have to change all of them. A long way to go still, but this was one very important step closer. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.
Was I ever in doubt? Ugh. USA, very good man. Yeah, I know, dad jokes. Was it too much?